Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. This video will be about the deletion of shopping items so that we can swipe them away in our recycler view and also undo that deletion. And yes, I know we haven't worried yet about this um, search functionality in our image pick fragment. I will leave that actually open as a homework. So I will just push the code to that in my GitHub repository but I'll leave it open that you can also add test cases for that just for practice. This video is sponsored by myself. If you want to take your learning to the next level, then click the first link in this video's description to get to my website, where you will find over 300 quiz questions for all my videos, take notes, climb the leaderboard and compete with other Android developers just by creating a free account. So first of all, I actually want to paste our shopping item adapter. I don't see any reason in implementing this in this video because it is so similar to the image adapter we already implemented. And I think you should already know how to set up a recycler view adapter. So in our root package, in our adapters package, I will just paste this and call that shopping item adapter. But we will actually write the rest of the functionality on our own. And I think I need to adjust some imports here. Remove this and then re-import shopping item and R. And the rest should be fine. So back to our shopping fragment. In here, I first want to implement the, the item touch callback for our swipe to delete functionality. So private val item touch callback and we set that equal to object colon um, item touch helper dot simple callback and here we want to pass zero for the drag directions and for the swipe directions we pass left which we need to import uh, left oh my god left from item touch helper here or right also from item touch helper so that we can swipe in both directions and then we can press Control i to implement those two functions here the on move function will stay empty or we'll just return true you can also make that a one liner remove this and just set it to true and in the on swipe function we now want to delete the item we swiped away so we first want to get a variable here for the position we swiped. So val position is equal to view holder dot layout position. And then we can get reference to the item. So with that position and for that, we actually need to inject our adapter and the constructor here first. So we have access to that. So inject constructor. And in here, we will just have a val shopping item adapter, which is of type shopping item adapter. And in our on swipe function, we can then use that shopping item adapter to get a reference to the item. So val item is equal to shopping item adapter dot shopping items at the index of position. And then we can delete that actual item. So we use our view model here dot delete shopping item and we pass that item and since we also want to provide the functionality of undoing that deletion we use a snack bar here snack bar dot make require view and use the text successfully deleted item snack bar dot length along and then we call a dot apply on that snack bar because we want to set an action here with the text undo. And when we click on that, we simply want to use our view model again and insert that item that we deleted. So insert shopping item into DB because we don't need to check if that actually fits to our requirements because if it already was in our database, then we know it can also get back there and we simply pass our item here and then afterwards just show the snack bar then next we write a function to set up our recycler view with that item touch helper so private function setup recycler view in which we will just use our rv shopping items dot 
apply. I want to set the adapter of that to our shopping item adapter and the layout manager to new linear layout manager, pass require context. And we also want to attach this item touch helper. So we actually need to create that first item touch helper with our item touch callback. And we want to attach that to the recycler view this. And then we can create another function here to subscribe to our observers from the view model private function subscribe to observers. And in here we want to use our view model and subscribe to changes of our shopping items live data. So our shopping items that come from the database. We observe on that with our view lifecycle owner and an observer. And then we can simply use our shopping item adapter dot shopping items and set that to it. Now that's already it for this observer. And then the next one will be view model dot total price dot observe pass that observer and lifecycle owner again. And then we first want to get a reference to the price. So in case that is null, we just want to check that. So val price is equal to it. And if that is null, we set it to zero F and we set the price text equal to total price colon and then we simply insert the price here with euros afterwards or of course your own currency. And then we set our TV shopping item price from fragment shopping XML dot text to our price text. And then we can scroll up and call these two functions in our on view created function. So first of all, subscribe to observers and then set up recycler view. And that's it for our shopping fragment. But right now this will lead to a problem because when we want to test that, then we usually want to use a test view model for our tests. And we can use that test view model with our fake repository. So that is nothing new here. But the problem here is that once we call this subscribe to observers function, this shopping fragment will just subscribe to these observers here from the view model. And this view model will be the real view model when we create it here. So also in our test cases, because even if we set this view model to the test view model in our test cases, the change will only happen after all of our lifecycle functions were called. So after we already observed on the view model live data from our real view model and not from our fake view model. And this will just not work. So in our add shopping item fragment, we also had a view model which we set in our test cases, but there this was not a problem because that was basically a user triggered event when we added a shopping item. And that was not an event that was immediately triggered in on view created. But here that is the case. So what we need to do is we need to have a way to pass this view model in the constructor of the fragment. So once we construct this fragment object, we already want to tell that we want to have a view model with a fake shopping repository in our test cases. And in our real fragment, we don't want that. But since we need to use a fragment factory for that, that is actually not that easy. So what we actually need to do is we need to create a custom fragment factory for our tests. And in that fragment factory, we will instantiate this shopping fragment with a view model that was created with a fake repository. So let's declutter that and go step by step. We want to use a second parameter here in our shopping fragment constructor, which is our view model. That is of type shopping view model and I'll set that to null initially. And we can remove this view model here. And then in the fragment factory for this real fragment, so for our app, not for our test cases, we will just instantiate this view model here as it is. And actually this must be a var of course, so we can reassign that. So in this real fragment, we will just um, create the view model here and on view created. But in our test fragment where we pass our test view model, 
we actually want to pass that as a parameter. And in that case, we don't want to initialize it here. So we must have to do a null check here, view model, and use this operator here. So if this view model is actually not equal to null, it will just stay as it is. And if it is equal to null, so if we are in our real fragment and not in our test fragment, then we will instantiate it with this instead. So we actually need to make some null checks down here, on the one hand here, 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 and here, and also these two here. And then we can actually create this fragment factory for our test cases I talked about. So that is actually exactly the same factory, just that we also provide a fake shopping repository. So where do you actually have that? I think in the UI package, yeah, here our shopping fragment factory, we copy that, go to our Android test directory in the UI package, and we paste that. And this I will call test shopping fragment factory. And here where we create this at not this at shopping item, we actually need to create that. Um, so our shopping fragment, double colon, class of Java dot name. In that case, we want to create a new shopping fragment. On the one hand, with a shopping item adapter that we need to provide here. So private val shopping item adapter. And we can use that in here. And we also want to um, pass our fake shopping repository Android test. Because right here we are inside of our test shopping fragment factory. Oh, and of course, we want to wrap that around a shopping view model. We don't want to pass the plain repository here. Instead, we want to put that into our shopping view model. And then we can copy this block of code because that is also missing in our real fragment factory. So let's move back to that shopping fragment factory and just paste it here. Remove this view model because then it will just be instantiated with null instead. And we also create our private val shopping item adapter here. And then we can write our actual test case in our shopping fragment test class, um, Android test shopping fragment test here, in which we first want to inject our test fragment factory now. So late init var, late init var, test fragment factory, which is of type test fragment, test shopping fragment factory. And we want to inject that with a dagger hilt. And then we can create our test case here. Add test function swipe shopping item underscore delete item in DB. So what do we want to do now? First of all, we want to create a shopping item. Then we want to insert that shopping item into our database in our fragment that we launch in a hilt container. Then we want to simulate that swipe with Espresso. And then we want to assert that our shopping items list from our database is actually empty. So let's create that shopping item first. It's equal to new shopping item. And the name doesn't matter. The amount does not matter. The price does also not matter. And the image URL also not. And I'll also give it an ID of one. And then I will create a var test view model because we need a reference to that view model from our fragment in this test function, which is of type shopping view model nullable. So we set it to null initially. And now we can launch our fragment in the hilt container, our shopping fragment, and also pass our um, fragment factory, so our test fragment factory here. And because we have this lambda function here, we don't have access to this fragments view model outside of this lambda function. So that's why we create this test view model here, which we can then set to the view model of our fragment. 
And then we can also use the view model of our fragment and insert a shopping item into the database. And we want to insert the item, the item we created above. And that's already it for this container function. So now because we inserted that item, that also means that our receptor view of the fragment contains that one item because we have that observer in our fragment. So what we can do now is we can use on view with Espresso. We want to um, check something from our recycler view. So with ID, r.id.rv shopping items, we want to perform an action here, which will be of type recycler view actions again, dot action on item at position. And we need to pass the view holder, which is of type shopping view holder, um, shopping item view holder actually. And in here, we want to perform that action on the first item, so position zero. And the action we want to perform is swipe left. So view actions dot swipe left. You can see with Espresso, we have all the options here to swipe in all directions, but we want to swipe left here. And then we want to assert that. And again, we don't want this J unit assert that. Uh, that is a little bit annoying always. So we need to remove this import here. But the truth library is just so much better. Import that from truth library. And we want to assert that in our test view model. So now we actually need that reference to the view model. Make that null check and dot shopping items so or shopping items live data dot get or await value that this is actually empty because we deleted that item, the single item in that list. So that shopping items list must now be empty. So we just created that shopping item here for the test. We created a test view model. And then we simply set the value of that test view model to the view model of our fragment in that hilt container. We inserted that item we created so that one item is automatically added to our recycler view in our fragment. And then we just use this espresso statement here to simulate a swipe to the left on the item in our recycler view at position zero. And then we just assert that our shopping items list is empty. And because we didn't test live data in this test case, we don't have this instant task executor rule up here. We need to also declare that get colon rule var instant task executor rule is equal to new instant task executor rule. And then let's actually run that test case. And hopefully everything should work here. So let's see. And does it succeed? Yes, it does. So our test case is working perfectly fine. Okay, so thank you so much for following through this long in this playlist because that was really not an easy playlist. It was actually the hardest topic I personally learned, learned for Android. But I hope you learned something new. And also, as I said, in the GitHub link in this video's description, I will just also push the rest of the project here, which is actually only the search functionality in our image pick fragment. And I just really, really, really recommend you to play around with that project. There's so much more stuff you can test here. And I actually covered almost all of it. So all the knowledge you need, you already have now. And now it is time to apply that. And because you followed through this so long, I want to give you a special coupon code for my website, which is professional tester, you will get 15% on all my courses with that. Please tell me below what you liked about this series and also what you didn't like what I can improve on uh, that would really help me. And also just give this video a like if you liked it. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, then do that you will get regular Android content every second day. Have a very nice day and see you in the next video. Bye bye.